ان الحمد لله رب العالمين واصلي واسلم انا مبعوث العالمين وعلى اله واصحابه واهل بيتي اجمعين قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القران الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واقيموا الصلاه واتوا الزكاه واركعوا مع الراكعين صدق الله العظيم وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من قام الصلاه فقد قام الدين ومن ترك الصلاه فقد هدم الدين او كما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام believe in brothers and sisters we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing each and every one of us with the tawfiq that you and I can gather here today the best of day of the week where we congregate to listen to a lecture a khutbah that will help us either to understand some aspect of our deen or learn some aspect of our deen or for a reminder that will enable us to become a better muslim and will inject spirit and motivation in us to live our lives as true followers of our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as we continue to be a servant of our maker salam and salutation upon our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam believe in brothers and sisters Salah, it is not a strange word to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He commands Salah 35 times. And with every command of Salah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He, com- he connects it with zakah wa aqimu as-salah wa atu zakah salah when we muslims speak about it we speak about the five daily prayers that is compulsory upon each and every one of us to perform and the reason why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands it in the quran 35 times it it is to emphasize the importance of prayer in the life of each and every one of us and its importance in our daily lives The man who gives charity, but yet still this brother does not pay, pray his five times, Salah, that person he earns the displeasure and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what is Salah? And why do we have to pray? In fact, Salah it is that which brings true happiness it is that which brings comfort peace of mind ease and joy to a believer salah for each and every one of us it is that which nourishes the soul just as food nourishes the body and it's considered to be the most important act in the life of each and every one of us where we communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala direct and the reason why I choose to speak on this topic is simply because many of you probably in your masajids 
we'll be having programs tonight and would have had program last night or many imams will be speaking about the topic of Mi'raj and Isra. And Mi'raj and Isra, when we speak about it, we speak about the journey, the ascension of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that meeting, that appointment with his Rabb, where the Prophet on whom be peace, he received the greatest gift that his Ummah is gifted with. And in fact, without any doubt, historically, there hasn't been any great miracle like that of the Isra and Mi'raj. Because no other Prophet was invited to visit the seven heavens except our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Every command, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala command in this world by the command of Salah, the Prophet on whom be peace, he was taken to this maqam. With the Prophet on whom be peace, he was given Salah. Many of you probably would have heard and would have read that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Jibra'il opened his chest to out the heart of the Prophet on whom be peace when he was at the age of four, wash it with Zamzam and fill the heart of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with faith, with yaqeen, with hikmah, with wisdom and also with ilm, knowledge. This took place when the Prophet was four years old and this also took place when the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this was this took place actually 11 years after Hijrah that the Prophet on whom be peace again before he was taken up to the Mi'raj that is his meeting with Allah Jibreel Alaihi Salatu Wasalam he came and Jibra'il, he opened the chest of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, took out the heart of the Prophet on whom be peace, and again, he washed it in a golden tray that came from heaven, and he filled the heart of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with Iman, with Yaqeen, with Hikmah, and Ilm. This for each and every one of us, it's a very important lesson because no well for you to ascend to the heights of piety, righteousness, it is important for you to have a clean heart. Last night I did a lecture in Burbis and one of the, the Imams, he came to me and he said, Malana, I remember a lecture that you did a few years ago and you said, in your lecture about the heart, that the heart is the parliament for the body of each and every human being. That whatever is in the heart automatically is what comes out of you. What is inside of you comes out of you. A person, he says, I memorize this thing and I memorize it. I have it in my heart. Love, you say heart, it's inside of you. But you know, there is one thing, I, th I never think I ever mentioned this in my khutbah, that every one of us, we have two hearts. One of one heart actually is what pumps the blood into your body. And there is another heart, which is, that's the physical heart. There is a spiritual heart in the body of each and every one of us that we store our iman, our faith. You listening to me? The Prophet on whom be peace, he said, when you commit a sin, then a black dot is placed on the heart and that black dot can only be removed when you make tawbah. But never did a doctor discover that a person has a complete dark and black heart. The color of the heart of each and every one of us, it's the same. You agree with me? So the black heart, the Prophet on whom be peace, when he mentioned about the heart becomes darkened, and Khatam Allahu ala 
Allah placed a seal over some people's hearts that you speak to them about Qiyamah and about death. Yet still they will not understand. Many a times when I sit with the students and I speak to them about Qiyamah, I speak to them about Barzakh and, and, and hell and heaven. I'm looking at them and I tell them, you know what, you boys will not understand this. You will not understand. Age is one of the things that helps us to understand certain things. You become old. If you're to sit with a person who is suffering from some illness, and you know the illness that this person is suffering from now, it is maybe the, which will become the cause of his death. Because when the angel of death said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabbi, I will take in, I, you appoint me to take the soul of mankind. They will, they will not like me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said to the angel of death, he said, I will create reasons and causes for which they will die. Yes or no? There are sicknesses, like for example, a person he died because of heart failure, kidney failure. So you cannot point finger at the angel of death. Instruction is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when your time up, your number call, adios amigo hasta la vista. You have to go. There is no doctor that can turn the clock back. You agree with me? And there is no medication that you can go to as much as we try when Allah decides for us to leave this world. But always understand, as a believer, nothing goes with you, yes. But one of the things that go with you, one of the things that defends you, one of the things that accompany you in your grave is your salah. And I said this to my wife one morning, we woke up late for salah and I said this, I said, please, regardless of what, if you, if I'm sleeping, even though the Prophet knew me peace, he said, if you sleep, إِذَا نَسِئْتَهَا أَوْ نِنْتَ عَلَيْهَا If you sleep and you miss your prayer, or you forget to pray, the Prophet wasallam he said, when you wake up, perform that prayer. Don't leave your prayer. Allah will take you to account on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah for every prayer you miss. You are a mature brother and mature sister and you are not praying your five salah. Every salah Allah will take you to account for on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. If there is any message you leave it today, remember this. You are a Muslim and you are not performing your prayer. So if I am to die today, and when I die, and I'm to be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, did you perform your Fajr Salah? What answer am I going to give to Allah if I didn't perform my Fajr Salah? What answer you will give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you were to die after Zuhr Salah, and after, after you pass away after Zuhr Salah, if you were to die and you didn't perform your Zuhr Salah, what would you tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I said that you can be, you can, a man can give charity, but if that person doesn't pray, you can be, mashallah, a very good, a very kind, a very generous brother or a very generous sister, but you do not pray, you earn the anger of Allah, the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make how much dua you want to make, Allah will not answer your dua. If your salah in your life is right, then everything is right. You will eat right, you will drink right, you will talk right, you will live right, you will die right. You can never go wrong with the brother who is performing his salah. You ask a young man, tell me what type of wife are you looking for? Every one of us wants a flashy wife. And I, in my khutbas in the past, I described the kind of a woman today that... The young boys, they have a notion of describing the type of bodies and color they're looking for. But when you come to a woman of Salah, this sister she's making of five Salah, she may not be good looking like the other sister. But this sister, she has a connection. She has a secret between she and her maker. This other one, there is no secret except she and the sweet man she had before. Or the boyfriend she used to hang out with before. But this sister, mashallah, she's living a pure and a clean life. But you know what? 
The system may not be good looking. The system may not have the body that you're looking for. The system may not be having the color that you're looking for. But she is on deen. Because one of the things we learn is man aqama salah faqad aqama deen. The person who performed their salah aqama deen, the established prayer. The man who established prayer, the man who performed his salah, he establishes deen. Woman taraka salah. If there is anyone among us here, brother, I'm telling you this, you can come for Juma salah. Don't think that you're doing Allah a favor. No. If every one of us, we were to worship Allah, not only on Juma, not only five times a day. If we were to worship Allah ten times a day, don't believe Allah's kingdom will increase in any way or any form or any shape. No, Allah will not, His kingdom will not increase because you are praying. But you will become a better person because we are told this, what Salah does to us. A man, he was committing sin. And this person, when he was committing sin, somebody came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet, he loved this person because when he comes, he used to crack some jokes with the Prophet on Numbi Peace. But this man used to consume alcohol. The Prophet on Numbi Peace, when this complaint came to him, the Prophet said, Leave this person, definitely Salah will change him. Because he is a prayer, the man is still performing his prayer. Because Salat stops us from immorality, from committing sins. And if a man is still committing sin, and this person is performing Salah, nothing is wrong with the prayer, but everything is wrong with the mind of that man, and the mindset of that person when he stands and pray. Isn't that so? The body is praying, and you heard me speak about this in one of my khutbah, but you know what? There is no taste in the prayer of this person. You're not enjoying your prayer. There are many of us who are like that. You're performing your prayer, but there is no taste in your prayer. You know, you just go through the motions. Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil You see some brothers stand up like this. You understand? I when you go wrong for ruku, you know, the brother, he just shake his body, go wrong. Imam go wrong. Sami Allah, holy man, hamid, rabbana, ala kalami, go wrong to such that. These um, arcans in your salah, they, they, are, they have a great meaning in the performance of these acts when you go in ruku, when you go in sajda. Because of time, I'm not going to explain that to you. Just imagine, I mentioned this in one of my khutbah and I just want to remind you about, about this. The brother goes and make wudu. Do you know that his salah starts when he make the wudu? Yes. Because that wudu is the key for your salah. So between there, you make your wudu, you come prepare for prayer. That's the reason why in our wudu that we make, also there are certain du'as that we should make. Do you know that? Many of us, we don't know. You wash your right hand. Allahumma a'tini kitabi bi yamini. Allah, give me my book in my right hand. Give me my book in my right hand. And... And then we continue to say, Allahumma la tu'atini kitabi yasari. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please do not give me my book in my left hand when we wash the left hand. When we wash our face, what should we say? Allahumma biyad wajhi. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make my face bright. On the day of Qiyamah when faces will be dark. I am not saying, I'm not, I'm not going to ask this question, brothers, do you do this or not? No. But there, this is where your salah starts. You make your wudu, you come in the masjid and you perform your salah. So coming back to what I was saying, that salah, a brother who is performing it or a sister, you can never go wrong with them if you are to choose them to be your husband or your wife. Because they have one of the most precious gifts that they can give you in life. I can remember a beautiful story about an Egyptian young person who was studying in America. His father found him a wife. And then when he went home in Egypt to marry this wife, what we call the organized, organized marriage, the nikah was performed. He didn't see the wife. This, you will find this happening in India and Pakistan and also in Bangladesh. So the father agrees, the mother agreed, the, the nikah was set, the brother came from America, he got married. When he went into the bedroom and he saw his wife, and she took off her veil and said, I'm your wife. 
Um, Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us that I am now your wife and you're my husband. And this unity, this coming together is through the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he looked at her, he was like, huh? This is what I marry? Do you understand? You know, in Ghana now, you know, our tradition, our culture is, Ma'ad Allah, may Allah forgive us, that we want to taste every thing <laughs> that we buy. I say Ma'ad Allah, may Allah wa ta'ala forbid. We want to taste everything, not only see. You got to see a wife to get, Ma, yeah, it is permissible. You want to see a wife? Yes, you look at her fingers. Not when you go married to her, next thing you know, the gaga fast finger or two finger ampul she on. Then she opens her mouth. You can see her teeth that she don't have fast teeth. That when you go to kiss her, she falls seat and up in your mouth and choke you. No, this is joyous. So we want to see everything and we want to taste everything. You go buy mango, you want to taste it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. Because there are many of us today. Many brothers and sisters who are getting married, and you know, even before the marriage, the sister is pregnant. Brothers and sisters, if we are to do such a thing no well, we would have come, we would have been committed zina. And zina, it is one of the sins Allah will not forgive. Shirk is one of the sins Allah will not forgive. That is associating partner with him. And the third sin is disobedience of parents. Allah will not forgive. And last night, one of the brothers, he was saying to me while we were driving, coming back, and I said to him, in a hadith it is mentioned, the private parts of the people who commit zina will smell so stink that even the people in paradise, they will smell, the smell will come and they will ask, where is this smell coming from? And then they will be told from the private parts of those people who used to commit adultery and fornication. Brother, your wife is not a Muslim. Your wife is not a Muslim. Sister, the, your husband is not a Muslim. Then you are committing zina. When the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated from Mecca to Medina, one of the ladies that migrated with the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told her husband who loved her and then didn't want a separation said, you know, please don't leave. She said, I have accepted Islam now. My belief changed, my code of conduct changed, the way of my life changed, now I'm a Muslim. And she went away, she migrated. And he was in love with her. She said, no, now I am in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which this love is much more precious, precious and priceless than any love. And I will make any sacrifice for my Rabb, not for the love that you will give me. Because many of us sometimes we say we're in love and our wife loves us and she kick us, us, kick us around like a football. So then this person, he traveled from Mecca and he went to Medina. And he was so in love with her that he came, said, you know what, I'm here, look for her, found her, I'm here to get married to you, but I'm ready to accept Islam. She said, go and talk to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You accept Shahada, then I will marry to you. Then was only when she was halal now for this brother. This person, now who became a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you and I, brothers and sisters, there are many of us, many of us who are living with wife and also with husband who are not Muslim. You need to fix this. What type of child you think comes from an illicit relationship? You think is a, is a child that mashallah of his blessed? No. You're committing a major sin. And then you have a child, mashallah. And you name the child what? Abdullah. What you name him? The slave of Allah. Was you the slave of Allah when you're going to your wickedness? So you want to give your son Abdullah. You get a daughter, you want to name she Aisha. Did Aisha just ever commit such a sin? Or Khadija? And you're committing sin like this? Believe in brothers and sisters. You see, salah is something that, mashallah, will bring about these changes in our life. That's the ethic of salah. If this is not happening in your life, that you are not seeing any changes in your life. That is not only physical change, spiritual change, the way you talk, the way you think. Then brothers, check your salah. Check your salah.
Many of us, we are not checking our salah. What we are checking? We are looking at other people when they are praying. One of the most um, amazing scenarios is when you look at a person who is performing their salah. A person is standing, mashallah, and why this person is praying? What they are reading? I don't know what this person is reading. This brother, maybe he is reading, Kul a'udhu bi rabbil falak. He is reading surah Fatiha. But this brother is communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every time this brother said, says, Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allah respond and say, Hamidani abdi, my slave glorifies me, praises me. This is what we want. If you were to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is responding to you while you're performing your prayer and he says, I'm happy with you. What else do you want? Who you want to be happy with you? The president of this country, a minister, your boss to be happy with you? Allah is happy with you. MashaAllah, you've accomplished everything in life. Through your salah, Allah will sustain you. Even though you get bread and butter to eat for breakfast and black tea, Allah is the one who's going to provide for you. Yes. Because through your prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sustain us. He give us. You want a job? Pray. You want, you want, you, you want money? Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go and look. You'll find a job. Allah will provide it for you. You want a wife? Pray. You want a husband? Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pray your salah. And then raise your hands and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what our Nabi used to do whenever he used to go. There was any problem. Any disaster, natural, natural disaster, the Nabi Sallallahu will go to Salah. That's the reason why Allah commands us in the Quran, وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ salah. This is the gift that is given to us. I said the greatest miracle in the history of man, it is the Mi'raj and the Isra. And this was given personally to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Every time a Muslim performed their prayer, Salah, it's a mi'raj of every believer. When you perform your salah also, you must feel as if, mashallah, you know, personally you feel, sometimes you say, by, you know, people say they're performing salah, they're listening to Quran. You know, I feel, you know, people say, by, I get a funny feelings. I'm listening to the recitation of the Quran and my hair grows. That person is feeling Alhamdulillah. The person is performing salah and tears come from the eyes of that person. Alhamdulillah. And salah to mi'raj. Just imagine you're performing salah. Every time you go to salah, you're actually going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the day that year that the Rabbi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was given this great gift which is a great gift to the Ummah. That year was known as Amul Hazan. Amul Hazan means the year that the Prophet of Nubi peace, he was, uh, was saddened. And the Prophet of Nubi peace, um, he grieved over three things that happened. One of, the, one, of the, one of them is that same year, his wife Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, she passed away. Not only that, but also he was very sad that his uncle also Abu Talib passed away. And that same year also was, the, was when the incident took place when the Prophet went to Taif. And you know the story, the Prophet was, was battered there. One of the things we learn as Muslim, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will give you a gift if you are to have sabr, patience with whatever you experience in your life. Whatever you go through in your life, no will. That you are going through this, no else, the others who are going through it also. But be steadfast. And steadfast, how? This is this weapon that Allah has given to us, this weapon, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so that we can use it to ensure it being peace of mind and solution to our problem, and that is salah. Whether you have a problem, stand up and pray. Pray to Raqqa Salah. You are the imam of yourself. Let me tell you this. Many times, you know, brothers, you know, you think about, you know, you go to the imam to pray for you. Brother, let me tell you something. You cannot pray. And this is something that also I need not to speak about because I often speak about it in my khutbas. 
that if you cannot perform your prayer and you are a Muslim, listen to me very carefully. Worse yet, you cannot read Quran. Brother, that's a shame. That's an insult to the integrity of calling yourself a Muslim or telling people that you're a Muslim when you cannot read the Quran and you cannot perform your salah. It's an insult to the integrity of a Muslim that you cannot even recite Surah Fatiha. An elder brother came to me and he said, Mawlana Badruddin was a few days ago and he said, I want to learn to perform Salah. And all the time, over the years, I know this brother working for an Islamic organization. So he tell me, give me a book that I can learn to read Salah. One of the first thing I personally will teach every student that come to the Dar al Alum is Salah. First thing, Tahara, Wudu, very important. Teach your children salah also. One of the first things you teach your children. And the brother told me that, you know, Maulana, I want to learn to pray. I was like, wow, this brother. And then I want to learn to read the Quran. Subhanallah. I said, brother, you know, for you to learn to read the Quran, you have to sit in the company of someone. Get a teacher, sit with him. And we have brothers in the Dardo, mashallah, who will come time and again, and mashallah, they will sit. And they will learn Quran with us here. Adults, nothing to be ashamed about. Nothing for you to be ashamed about. That you know what? At this age of my life, I'm learning to read the Quran. How many of you are not learning Spanish and Portuguese at a very old age? What about the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You die and you stand in front of Allah and Allah asks you, Do you can you read the Quran? Ya Allah, I don't know. I don't know. Is this answer? Is this answer good enough for you, Rabb? That you are 50, 60 years old. You have learned so much. You have a degree in engineering. You're a doctor. You're a lawyer. And you cannot read the Holy Quran. How many surahs of the Holy Quran you memorize? That's not a big question. Every one of us don't have to be Hafiz. No. But at least memorize as much Quran as possible as you can. Are we doing that? Are you satisfied? You know the four calls. Or the last ten surah. Believe in brothers and sisters. Coming back to what I was saying about salah. Definitely, it's difficult for us to complete the entire isra and mi'raj in one, in one khutbah, in one bayan. To explain to you exactly what took place with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam during this entire journey, but the most important thing that we speak about it is what was given to the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam on this journey, and that that was given to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is salah, and that is what we speak about. You know, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, he said to the Ummah, he said, Ana Sayyidu Waladi Waladi Adam Yawmul Qiyamah. You know, when the Prophet went to the sixth heaven, there the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he met with Musa Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. And Musa Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, he was crying. And when Musa was crying, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, why are you crying? He said, because your followers will be much more than my followers. The Muslims, they will be much more, that is, this ummah will be much more greater and larger than his followers. That's the reason why he was crying. And the Prophet Wasallam he said these words. He said, Ana Sayyidu Walad ibn Adam, Yawmul Qiyamah. I am the leader of all the children of Adam on the day of Yawmul Qiyamah. And the Prophet said, you know what, I am not saying this to boast, but it is a fact that I will be the one. We are the last Ummah, we will be the first who will enter into Jannah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he received the command of Salah first, it was 50 Salah. And then Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, he told the Prophet, as the Prophet returned, when the Prophet was returning, after he was given this command by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet on Nubi peace, he met with Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Musa said, listen man, oh Muhammad, what madha umirtabi? You know what it is 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commands you with. Subhanallah. Just imagine that. He said, what Allah has commanded you with. Huh? Because Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, when he went up to the mountain of Tur, he spent 40 days. When he came down, Allah gave him, Allah gave him the Ten Commandments, right? He came, went up, came back with the Ten Commandments. So Musa said, you know, whenever you go up, you ascend, you always come down back with something. What is it that you came back with? And he said that Allah commands 50 prayers. He said, this is difficult for them. Go and ask Allah that he can reduce that amount. The Prophet went, you know, the Prophet didn't want to go and ask. So Allah says, okay, fine, five. Then 45. Then Musa said, go back again and ask. Go back again. Until it reached to five. And the Prophet said, I am ashamed to go back and ask my Lord. Keep it at five. And the Prophet Sallallahu he came back. And the Prophet knew me peace. He told his Ummah, if you are to pre pre perform the five salah Allah command, you will get that 50 reward. But you know, if it was me and you then, in the place of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, we were placed to go back to Allah and ask Allah, even the five will be difficult upon us. We probably want to bargain with Allah and say, make a one to your week now. Yes or no? Because even Juma salah, sometimes a brother, he is so stuck up and caught up in his business and his job and he's in the office that the brother cannot leave. I have an appointment at one o'clock, so if I go to Juma, I'll miss my appointment. You have an appointment here with your maker, brother. And this appointment, you cancel the appointment with your maker. Imagine if Allah cancel your appointment with him. What will you do? Just imagine this. We only make time when we get time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, well, you know, brother, you have the power to change the dynamics in your life. No one else. I wish to go over it again. You have the power to change the dynamics in your life. If you live your yesterday the same way you have done, you live your today the same way you have done yesterday, then you will live your tomorrow the same way you have lived today. Yes. How are we going to change? How changes come about? If you want to change your old ways, or if you want a new life, then change your old life. I wish to go for that again. If you want a new life, then change your old life. And many of us, we are not prepared to do that. You know what? Because we are just accustomed, like a man, he's accustomed to sit on a chair. And the chair has a nail. And when he sits on it, he sits on it, that pokes him. So that body is accustomed to that poking. It's not so. That bomb that is there. If you have to take all that bomb, it's not for the chair, by something missing here, but I'm not feeling this thing joking me anymore. Yes or no? So he likes it. Many of us, we don't like to make changes. Why? Because we are lazy. This is one of the things I want to, I want to mention, inshallah. I hope in my next clip, I will be able to mention this to you. But coming back to what I was saying, this is the salah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he received. But one thing I want to mention before I come to an uh, come the end of our khutbah today is the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, when he went um, he was introduced to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam and Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam he said something to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to the Nabi O oh, Prophet of Allah he said please inform your ummah of Jannah and the seedlings the seed links to this Jannah. And what he said, that they should recite the seedlings of every Subhanallah. And this is what he mentioned Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Walla ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar. Read it as much as possible. Trees will be planted. No, you know, there is a, what you call it, when the Prophet reads Sadrul Muntaha, then the lecture continues. I said, I cannot complete the entire lecture. One of the other things the Prophet of peace he saw here when he went was that he was introduced to the angel who is responsible for hell. His name is Malik. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, Oh Muhammad, this is Malik. The Prophet of peace, he greeted Malik. Malik responded. When Malik responded, he responded with his mouth. No changes. Swell up like an angry person. So the Prophet asked him, oh, Jibra'il, you know, what happened? He's not, you know, he's not smiling, like he didn't like my coming. What's going on? 
So uh, Jibreel said, O Prophet of Allah, if there would have been any person, the angel of this angel who is in charge for hell would have smiled with it, it would have been you. But even you, he didn't smile with it. Oh, uh, what, 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 what do you mean? He said, you know, since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created hell, this angel never smiled. And just imagine brothers and sisters, if you and I, we were to go there, and the reason, reason for us to go there is simply because of our salah, ma'adhullah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, then respected brothers and sisters, we will reach up with Malik. We will reach up with him. Definitely, you will see Malik. And all of us want to see Malik. I personally, I'm praying, I'm begging Allah, oh Allah, I don't want to see this angel. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help each and every one of us, brothers and sisters, that you and I, establish our prayers in our life, our five salah. For those of us who are not praying our five salah, I encourage you, brothers, to start to perform your five salah. I encourage you, I'm not saying to you that you know what, brother, start to pray if you're praying one, start to pray two. No, brother. This is not enough. This is not enough. As a Muslim, no. Don't feel that you're doing Allah a favor by praying one more extra or two more extra so you make it three a day. No, your five salah. Wherever you miss it, make qada for it. And you must only miss it, like what I have mentioned to you in the hadith of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah give us all the tawfiq that you and I, inshallah, will perform our salah and also will ensure that our family, our wife and our children, our husband also perform the salah, brothers and sisters also. Wa khiru dawa and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.